This is a picture test in practical histology of the respiratory system. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, pause the video at the beginning of each slide and take your time in reading the question and coming up with the answer. Then replay the video to confirm your answer and listen to further comments and explanations. Identify the epithelium. Name two parts in the body where you would expect to find such an epithelium. And then identify the cells B. What is their function? This is a type of epithelium that, though comprising only a single layer of cells, has its cell nuclei positioned in a manner suggestive of stratified epithelia. So it is a pseudostratified epithelium. The term pseudostratified is derived from the appearance of this epithelium in section, which conveys the false, that's to say pseudo means almost or approaching. So there's a false impression that there is more than one layer of cells, when in fact, this is a true simple epithelium since all the cells rest on the basal lamina. You can see here the glassy basement membrane. Note in this sketch that all the cells, they rest on the same basal lamina, but they have their nuclei at different levels. So they create the illusion of cellular stratification. The tall cells, as you can see here, they are the most numerous. So that's why it's called a columnar epithelium. The tall cells are also ciliated. So the official name of this epithelium is pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium. The cell B is a goblet cell. It is also columnar epithelial cell, but secretes mucus. These goblet cells are interspersed among ciliated cells. They accumulate mucigene granules, which will be washed out during H and E preparations, resulting in a clear area in the upper part of the cytoplasm. This pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium with goblet cells is the typical respiratory epithelium that lines conducting airway, such as nose, nasopharynx, trachea, and bronchus. Prolonged and repeated damage results in the replacement of ciliated epithelium by squamous epithelium. This is called squamous metaplasia. In contrast to the ciliated cells, the number of goblet cells increases during chronic irritation of the air passages. And this will result in a thicker layer of mucus in order to trap irritants. But the reduced number of cilia retards the rate of mucus elimination, resulting in congestion. Identify the layers. What is the function of C? The four layers are the mucosa A, lined by typical respiratory epithelium, ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium. There's a narrow lamina propria included in the mucosa. Then we have the submucosa in B. C is the cartilaginous layer. You can see the chondrocytes arranged in clusters, usually the clusters of two to four cells and each cluster being separated from its neighbors by amorphous cartilage matrix. These are the features of a hyaline cartilage, typical features. D is the adventitia, loose connective tissue with some blood vessels and nerves. There is no circumferential muscular coat. So this respiratory passage is not a bronchus, although the full extent of C is not shown, but the cartilage is in fact in the form of a C-shaped cartilage, rather than in the form of small cartilage plates. Small cartilage plates are expected to be present in the bronchus. So this cartilage is a continuous large C-shaped cartilage a feature of the trachea. There are about 16 to 20 of these C-shaped hyaline cartilages. Some anastomose with adjacent cartilages, they keep the airway always open and prevent collapse of the tracheal lumen. And so also they provide flexibility and may calcify with age. The absence of muscularis layer in the trachea is compensated by the presence of smooth muscle fibers 
connecting the ends of the C-shaped cartilage. These are called trachealis muscle. They are not shown in this slide, but you can see them here in this inset, trachealis muscle. Identify the layer A, list two obvious structural components, and identify the structures B. In which layer are they located? Look at the photomicrograph on the right side, the magnified. The epithelium is a typical respiratory epithelium. The middle uh, photomicrograph shows a cartilage ring, indicating that the sections are taken from the tracheal wall. So now layer A is located underneath the epithelium and is separated from the epithelium by a basement membrane. It can be seen here as a glassy homogeneous layer packed with collagen fibers. This layer becomes thicker in smokers as a response to mucosal irritation. Layer A is thus the lamina propria. It is part of the mucosa. So the mucosa consists of the epithelium, the basement membrane, and the lamina propria. The lamina propria, as you can see here, is made of loose connective tissue. You can see collagen fibers, fibroblasts with their spindle-shaped nuclei. It is also highly vascular. You can see a venule and a small arteriole here lined by flattened endothelial cells. There is also a diffuse lymphatic tissue indicated by lymphocytes with their rounded nuclei. Plasma cells might also be seen and sometimes lymphatic nodules which are not shown here. B is a collection of seromucous secreting glands. They are located in the submucosa and the marker B is exactly at the region of the asini of these glands. A duct can be seen nearby and this duct carries the secretions to the surface by traversing the mucosa and opening on the epithelial surface. Repeated damage of the mucosa by irritation such as smoking results in increased activity of these seromucous glands as well as the goblet cells. Identify the structure A, give two obvious reasons for your identification. This tube has the same general histological structure as the trachea, but the C-shaped cartilage rings are replaced by cartilage plates, which are distributed around the entire circumference of the wall. Smooth muscle fibers form a complete circumferential layer. You can see them in the magnified photomicrograph on the right lying just underneath the mucosa and you can follow this muscularis layer all around the circumference of the tube. These are features of a bronchus. So instead of the four layers of the, in the trachea, a bronchus has five layers, mucosa, muscularis, submucosa, cartilage and adventitia. Also you can see that there are some seromucous glands in the submucosa, the same as in the trachea. Such glands are not present in the bronchiole. In some places, the muscularis layer may appear discontinuous because of its spiral course. Contraction of the muscularis layer regulates the diameter of the airway, and depending on the location and caliber of the bronchus, it could be a main bronchus, lobar bronchus, or a segmental bronchus. Lobar and segmental bronchi are usually located in the lung, and in sections, they might be surrounded by lung tissue. So two main features here, again, to differentiate the bronchus from the trachea, a discontinuous layer of cartilage plates and a circumferential layer of smooth muscle fibers. Cartilage plates are distributed around the entire circumference of the wall and so give the bronchi a circular shape in contrast to the ovoid shape with a flattened posterior wall of the trachea because of the deficiency of the cartilage ring in the trachea posteriorly. Identify the main circular structure. What is the source of its oxygenated blood supply? In this respiratory tube, there is no cartilage in the wall, so it's not a bronchus. It cannot also be a trachea, especially it is here surrounded by alveoli of lung tissue, so it is inside the lung and can by no means be a trachea. It is a bronchiole. Bronchioles measure one millimeter or less in diameter, and the epithelium gradually transforms into a simple ciliated columnar epithelium like the one that we see in here, 
Goblet cells might be seen in the largest bronchioles, but they are not present in the small terminal bronchioles. I can hardly see a goblet cell in this section. In people who are exposed to irritants in the air, there will be excess of goblet cells, as we have mentioned for other parts of the conducting respiratory passages. Note that there is a relatively thick layer of smooth muscle fibers. Two main features here are absent in the bronchial in comparison to a bronchus. No glands in the submucosa and no cartilage plates. In fact, there is no submucosa at all, so there are no submucosal glands. Going to the second part of the question, the lung is supplied by blood from two arteries, pulmonary and bronchial arteries. The pulmonary arteries carry the deoxygenated blood to the lung to be oxygenated in the alveoli. Bronchial arteries are small vessels in comparison to the pulmonary arteries. They are branches of the descending thoracic aorta and they carry oxygenated blood to the bronchial tree, including the bronchial shown in this slide. These conducting airway passages have thick wall and they cannot extract oxygen from the air that is present in their lumen. Identify the structures A, what is their function, and identify the cell B, what is its function. This is a pseudostratified ciliated epithelium, a respiratory epithelium. A represents the cilia of the most numerous of the cell types, the columnar cells. The cilia project from the apical surface. Function of the cilia is that they provide coordinated sweeping motion of the mucus coat from distal to proximal part of the air passages. The mucus coat is produced by goblet cells and by the glands of the submucosa. The mucus traps the particulate matter and then it will be sweeped away by the cilia. So this sweeping action of the cilia is a protective mechanism for removing the small inhaled particles. It should be remembered that the cilia are so fragile and are vulnerable to damage by inhaled toxic chemicals like cigarette smoke, or car exhaust fumes, and by bacterial and viral infection. For the second part of the question, note that in this epithelium, not all the cells extend to the luminal surface. It's a pseudostratified epithelium. There are basal cells that do not reach the surface. Most of these basal cells are in fact stem cells that maintain cell replacement in the epithelium. Their nuclei that form a row in close proximity to the basal lamina. This would be the most likely answer, but it should be remembered that those basal cells could also be enteroendocrine cells, which contain secretory granules that secrete local hormones, paracrine secretion. These local hormones, they regulate the muscular tone in the bronchial and vessel wall. The enteroendocrine cells are difficult to distinguish from stem cells, and they can only be seen using special immunohistochemical stains. These enteroendocrine cells are the origin of an aggressive type of bronchial carcinoma. Identify the cells A and B. What is the function of each? On the right is a magnified view of the wall of the alveoli. Cell A is squamous and this is reflected on the shape of its flattened nucleus. These cells, like cell A, they line most of the surface of the alveoli. It represents type 1 alveolar cell. Type 1 alveolar cells are structural cells. They constitute part of the air-blood barrier, and they are not capable of cell division like the cell B. The cell B is cuboidal, or at least not as flattened as type one cell, cell B bulges into the airspace and are specially located at the septal junctions. It's a type 2 alveolar cell. Type 2 alveolar cells are as numerous as type 1 cells, but because of their shape, which is not squamous, they cover only about 5% of the alveolar air surface. These type 2 alveolar cells are precursor cells of type 1 alveolar cells. Hyperplasia of type 2 alveolar cells is a marker of alveolar injury and repair. Type 2 alveolar cells 
are not only the precursors of type 1 cells, but they also secrete the surfactant, which reduces the surface tension at the air epithelium interface. The synthesis of the surfactant occurs in the fetus after the 35th week of gestation. Without adequate secretion, the alveoli collapse. That is why premature infants suffer neonatal respiratory distress syndrome. Identify the structure A, name the special type of non-ciliated cells present in its lining epithelium. Identify the labeled formations B and C. This is a lung tissue showing a terminal bronchiole in A. A terminal bronchiole is the smallest conducting bronchiole. By conducting, we mean that there is no exchange of gases in the wall of these respiratory passages. They only conduct the air. Note the circumferential layer of smooth muscle fibers. Although not clear at this magnification, but this bronchiole is lined with a simple cuboidal epithelium consisting of ciliated cells and non-ciliated cells. The non-ciliated cells have a special name called Clara cells. These Clara cells are found not only in the terminal bronchioles, but also in the respiratory bronchiole. In the electron microscopy, they show having a dome-shaped apical projection and display characteristics of protein-screening cells. Many functions are attributed to them. They produce one of the components of the surfactant. They act as stem cells, and they contain enzymes which detoxify noxious substances. Therefore, we expect that these cells increase in response to increased levels of pollutants like cigarette smoke. The formation B is an alveolar duct, which is an elongated airway that has almost no walls, only alveoli at their peripheral boundary. Also note here that there are rings of smooth muscle present in the knob-like interalveolar septa, controlling the size of the lumen of such alveolar duct. C is an alveolar sac. Alveolar sacs are spaces surrounded by clusters of alveoli. The surrounding alveoli open into these spaces. Identify the cells marked by the arrows. What is their function? These cells are present in the connective tissue of the alveolar septum, and they might also be seen in the airspace of the alveolus. They clearly contain particulate matter in their cytoplasm. They are alveolar macrophages. Alveolar macrophages remove inhaled particulate matter, for example, dust. Thus, they are also called dust cells. The alveolar macrophage may also phagocytize red blood cells that may enter the alveoli in heart failure, as well as phagocytize infectious organisms. Some alveolar macrophages filled with accumulated phagocytized material may remain in the alveolar septum for much of an individual's life, and an, at an autopsy, the lungs of urban dwellers, people who live in the cities, as well as the smoker's lungs, will show many of these macrophages filled with particulate matter, causing mottling of the lung surface.